Welcome back. You are listening to Nate the Hate on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And with that, I'd like to dedicate this episode to Sketchdog, whom generously donated $100 to support the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, we have a Streamlabs link in the description below. Donate any dollar amount, ask a question, we will answer the question at the end of the episode. Donate $100 or more, and we will dedicate the episode to you. Today's episode, once again, is dedicated to Sketchdog. And with that, I'd like to welcome in my co-host, Modern Vintage Gamer. What's going on, Nate? It's great to be here. And i um, looking forward to today's topic because there is a direct coming. There is. After a lot of rumor and some uncertainty circulating the news waves over the past month or so, Nintendo is having a direct in the month of June. And it will conclude, I guess what you'd say, is the month of festivities when it comes to gaming announcements as we had summer games fest just a couple of weeks ago and then we had the microsoft event just over a week ago now and we had sony earlier in the month all show brand new games from first party and third party partners and now it's nintendo's turn to make some brand new announcements and hopefully excite the switch base as earlier this year there was that talk from a couple of analysts and some journalists suggesting that Nintendo may have a potentially slow year in terms of major releases. But we will now find out if that is the case, because this will be the first June General Direct in quite some time for the company. As you'll remember, last year they had a partner showcase in June and we had to wait till September for a General Direct. So there's definitely a lot of anticipation and hopes that come with this June Direct. So before we jump in and talk about our predictions, I know we've, you know, got a couple that we want to go through. Why do you think Nintendo is having a June Direct? Because after Tears of the Kingdom, we kind of felt like that maybe Nintendo were probably going to skip June initially and focus potentially on September. But as you said, over the last few weeks, things have been heating up and now we're at the situation where obviously a direct has been announced. But I guess my question is, do you think there is enough meat on the bone here for Nintendo to have a June direct? Do you think it's the right move for them to to have one? Or do you think um, maybe they should have waited till September instead? With it being a month out since Tears of the Kingdom's release, And Pikmin 4 being the only game on the lineup with a known release date from Nintendo, a June Direct makes a lot of sense for them now. You know you're going to have a holiday release. And whether that is something meaningful, which we'll get into later with some of the first-party predictions, or something even more, you know, on a smaller scale, which we'll also get into later, this is the time to excite people about what's coming in that second half of the year. If you wait till September, you potentially risk having too small of a marketing cycle for a major release. You want to give it substantial time to gain some momentum and then remind people of the game again, likely in September, that a release is coming out in just a couple of months. You get the pre-orders going and you know you get those hype story trailers or whatever you want to call them. And if I'm Nintendo, that's exactly why I'm hosting a June Direct at this point in time. Mm -hmm. When you look at last year, they had already kind of detailed some of their holiday release at this point. And with Pikmin 4 being that only game with a release date, this is the time you have to strike. You could have waited until after Pikmin 4 if you wanted to in the second half of July. And you likely wouldn't have really lost anything in terms of momentum or energy for the system. But June has always been that month where people expect game announcements. So it feels as though maybe Nintendo just saw the opportunity and they figure everyone else is doing something this month. We don't want to be left behind and we want to get out ahead of Pikmin 4 because we have a lot of positive vibes on our side right now following the release of Zelda. So let's keep it going and let's drop some new announcements. No, and I think that makes total sense. You know, for me, the way I feel about this is... um, you know, I've beaten Tears of the Kingdom. I know a lot of people that have that I know that bought the game have also beaten it because it's been, I think we're five weeks past the launch of the game now. I think that's right, at least five or six maybe. 
it, it's it seems like things are very quiet all of a sudden. So having a June Direct does make a lot of sense for me. Like initially I felt like maybe Nintendo should just kind of leave the June Direct and focus on something later on this year so we don't kind of disturb the landscape of Tears of the Kingdom. But to be honest, and and I may upset someone and I apologize if I do, but I feel like Tears of the Kingdom is, the, the, that game is kind of, in the rear view mirror now. Was that, is that fair to say, Nate? Am I am I being too harsh on that game? I love the game, don't get me wrong. But I feel <laughs> like maybe that it didn't have the legs um, as, 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 as I thought it would because, like, people aren't really talking about the game anymore, at least in my kind of circle. People have finished it and they're kind of moving on. They're waiting for the next thing, you know. Like, I, I still haven't played the game. I haven't had time to sit down with that type of game right now. And I will say one of my friends had recently completed the game only in the last few days. And he posted like his thoughts and stuff on, I believe it was Facebook and he had texted me about it. And he was like, you know, what? it's a great game. He's like, I was ready to move on when I finished it. He's like, I'm looking forward to the next big thing, be it from Nintendo or from another company. He's really looking forward to final fantasy 16. And he was like, when I think about Tears of the Kingdom versus Breath of the Wild, he's like, it does a lot of what Breath of the Wild did better, but it didn't leave that lasting impact on him that Breath of the Wild did. He really doesn't have any desire to return to the world of Tears of the Kingdom, which, you know, maybe as time goes on, that may become a more common sentiment yeah. among players. But again, like those aren't my impressions. Those are his. I haven't played the game. So don't come at me with any, you know, hate or anger about these comments. <laughs> They're not mine. Um, but to your point, you know, I could see people saying, hey, I played Tears of the Kingdom. It was fantastic. Yes. But I'm ready for the next big thing. Yeah. And, you know, that's fine. That's the natural progression of that's, any That's kind of I'd where say. I'm at. And I think that's where a lot of people I know are at as well. Like, I think having a June Direct is, is the right play. Initially, you know, when, when we're in the kind of the middle of the Tears of the Kingdom, release you know like a week into it I, I didn't really feel like it made sense to even consider a direct but now it, it, it's the right move so nintendo has done well and uh, we don't we don't have to talk about tears of kingdom i know we we have some predictions to make as well but um i just wanted to get your your take on on you know the thought process behind a, a june direct i guess yeah it definitely feels as though it's just a case of having that momentum Tears of the Kingdom, a major release. And if you have that energy on your side, keep what? it in your sales. Yeah. Announce brand new games to get interested in beyond Pikmin 4. Because let's be honest, Pikmin 4 has its audience, but it's not going to cater to right. 98% of the Switch install base. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I, I've played Pikmin before, but it's just not really my my thing. So I'm definitely one of those people that, you know, it's cool that it's coming, but... It's not something that I'm interested in playing personally. And that's why they're going to have a June Direct to hopefully find <laughs> something that will yes. interest you. Yes, there will be some things, I'm sure. And with that, we can go to some third-party predictions of what could be at this Nintendo Direct. And I want to preface this, unless I say the words, I know it's going to be there. These are purely predictions. They're hopes and dreams. Most yeah. of them will not happen, but I just want to make that clear that yeah. if, it, if I do not say I know, it's just a prediction. And to add to that, Nate and I kind of brainstormed about, you know, 20 minutes before we recorded just to kind of get our thoughts together about predictions. And honestly, this is probably the hardest direct to predict because uh, there's there's so much that could happen. There's a lot... I think that is uh, has been thrown out into the universe that is more hopes and dreams. And look, it's going to be a, a tough one to predict, but we're certainly going to uh, you know give it give it our all here. so uh, let's let's maybe jump into the third party. So the big one that people are expecting to be at this Nintendo Direct comes from Atlas and it's Persona three reload which was announced at the Xbox showcase and has since had a trailer announcing the PlayStation versions as well. And it's been that curious omission of where's the switch. And it's naturally led to people saying, well, if it is a direct coming in just a couple of weeks or later this month, 
surely that would be where Persona 3 Reload is announced. Because if you look to last year, Persona 3, 4, and 5 weren't announced for Switch until the Partner Direct. So it's only natural to have that same expectation. But there is a caveat with this particular release. Atlas in Japan is already already running TV commercials for the game. Mm. And it lacks the switch version so it's really odd to begin a tv campaign yeah omitting a specific platform only to announce it a few days later especially in japan you know i mean yeah i that's a bit of a bummer like i wasn't really privy to that info um until you just mentioned it because i was gonna say that persona 3 would be in the direct but based on that, I mean, that's pretty compelling evidence to kind of suggest that it's probably not going to happen, at least r- not right now. So, yeah, Nate, I, I'm. That's that's a, that's interesting. I, I'm probably going to say no Persona Three, at the, at the direct based on based on that. But will it come later on? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the other games are available, so I could I could see it later on, but probably not at this direct. Yeah, it would definitely be a curious omission to not bring the game to the Switch platform because based on what we've seen from the trailers, there's definitely nothing there that is too pressing that would be beyond the scope of the Switch running the game. It could just have come down to a development timing issue where the Switch wasn't being considered when the project began. So maybe you get a late port or maybe it is something that they want to hold until you know next year when there's new hardware out. So it's going to be curious whether or not the game does show up for switch at this direct but right now you know based on the fact that the campaigning has already started in japan it feels as though the odds are slim Mm. that we're going to have it make an appearance at this particular direct but a persona game that should make an appearance is persona tactica which was also announced at the xbox showcase it's already been confirmed for the nintendo switch but having a nice little trailer in the direct would go a long way for just having that secondary marketing opportunity for the game yeah. especially to those who only have a switch as their main platform they may not be aware of this game announcement because it was tied to an xbox showcase yeah i can see persona tactica getting announced it, it makes a lot of sense for me and it's 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 a good one to put in a sw- in, in a direct so yeah i can see that Now, one of the games that was also announced earlier this month, well, it was shown earlier this month, was Mortal Kombat 1. This is coming to Nintendo Switch. And I've seen some talk online suggest maybe we'd get a first look at the Switch version at this Nintendo Direct, because right now we've only seen the PlayStation or the Xbox version up and running of this game. And my thought is we do not see it at this direct not because it's mortal Kombat, not because it's rated m you know for blood Mm -hmm. and gore and all that but because when i think back to mortal Kombat 11 we didn't see switch footage or native switch footage until closer to release and i had played mortal Kombat 11 at pax east where they wouldn't allow off screen footage to be filmed or anything of that sort so i'm kind of anticipating that's going to be a similar case here with mortal Kombat 1 and for that reason it does not make an appearance at this direct if it does it's going to be a generic cg trailer that's using a you know playstation or an xbox build of the game Mm -hmm. which then leads into the whole thing of people saying this is false advertisement and all that legal you know mumbo jumbo that's easier to avoid than you know subject yourself to okay so i have a few questions first of all is the switch version day and date with everything else i believe it is right as far as we know yes now the mk11 was that day and date or did that come out later do you you recall Um, i know it's been a while yeah i mean it's going back four or five years now um i believe it was day and date well, if that's the case, then I probably agree with you um, that it's not going to make it at the direct. But part of me feels like it might it might sneak in. This one feels a little different than MK11. There's a lot more, I don't know, it, it seems like there's a lot more hype and a lot more marketing around this one over MK11. But I do agree that if it is in the direct, then it's going to be something 
pretty bite size. Uh, nothing, certainly nothing like a deep dive or anything. But, you know, this is more, I guess for me really, because I like Mortal Kombat and I want to get the Switch version. So uh, I'd like to see it in, in this direct. And look, I think there's a there's an outside chance that, that, it, that it makes it in if it's day and date with everything else. Yeah, it'll be curious how they play the marketing cycle with this one. Because with Mortal Kombat 11, they definitely prioritized the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 version over the Switch version. And they would just kind of like, we'll wait till very late in the marketing cycle to begin to show the Switch version, which was a more than adequate port of the game. But, you know, why and how they decide to market specific third-party games is a question... We really can't answer. It's always left up to the big wigs at the publishing firm. And, you know, there's definitely always that concern. Oh, if it doesn't compare to the other versions, is it going to hurt us? Or can we just go in and hopefully get some of those pre-orders based on hype and anticipation from that Switch install base? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, yeah, here's what the game looks like. Hopefully it's good enough for you. And, you know, it's the exact same port team handling the game. So it should come in with quality performance and visuals yeah probably nothing too leaps over what mortal kombat 11 was but definitely sufficient enough if you only play on the switch or you have a curiosity to play a mortal kombat game in handheld mode while playing it undocked now for some other games that you know potentially could be here from third-party partners we have we have to bring up konami because Konami had their own little, you could almost say it was an event in of itself during the Sony showcase where they had announced Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta. And they had also announced the Metal Gear Collection, which included Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3. They had not announced platforms at that time. They just said on modern platforms, so it feels as though if this is switch bound, this is the moment to make it known. Yes, I think. Well, I'm I'm going to put it out there, and again, this is a prediction. I think Metal Gear Collection is running on the Switch because why not? I mean, these games they're not you know they're not anything taxing as far as what you need to to run. I think the Switch is an, the perfect platform for a Metal Gear collection in this fashion, and it will probably sell the most based on on you know on the past marketing that we know and, and past sales information that we know about how well Switch games or how well third party games like this sell on the Switch. So yes, I think Metal Gear Collection is available on the Switch, and it will be announced at this direct. And I agree with you that. If we don't see it at this direct, then I'm probably gonna have to walk that back that it it's not coming out for the Switch because this is the perfect time to announce the Metal Gear Collection. I don't feel like it makes any sense to announce it later. I think now is the time to do it. So if it does exist, it's it's at this direct, and I think it exists. So let, let's let's see it. I think it'd be a great a great announcement, and we'll get a lot of people excited. Yeah, it's definitely odd how they didn't announce the platforms for the collection because they had announced the platforms for Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta. So why not just specify the platforms that the collection are coming to? It feels as though there was a reason behind that. And the fact that Summer Games Fest came and went, the Xbox Showcase came and went, and there was no mention of the Metal Gear Solid collection at either of those events kind of lends a little credence to the idea. Maybe it shows up at this direct and then, you know, you announce it's coming to Switch and then you, on Twitter or wherever, you further elaborate that's also coming to PlayStation and Xbox. Obviously, we know it's coming to PlayStation. It's just yep. a question of what were those other platforms that you refused to name? Right. And, you know, it would be great to have the original Metal Gear Solid 1, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, all on the Switch. Because if you are a Nintendo gamer, the only Metal Gear release you've had on your platform is Twin Snakes. Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Yes. I'm not, and like I'm not going back in time to the Metal Gear games. We're strictly talking solid. But it'd be right. a great way to get those games into the hands of a new audience. And you know, there's there's always overlap. Those who own a Switch, there's likely some who will own a PlayStation or an Xbox. 
And if you can introduce them to this trilogy of games, maybe they'll be interested in Metal Gear Delta and they go out and buy an Xbox or a PlayStation for that reason because it's not coming to the Switch. Yep. So it's definitely a advantageous release if you're Konami. And hey, if you can sell a few hundred thousand copies on the Switch because a lot of us, you know, you and I, we played Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 on the Vita. We know the joys of handheld Metal Gear Solid. Oh, yeah. Those games are fantastic on the Vita. I uh, I really want this on the Switch. I, I'm going to will it into existence, Nate. Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I support this. Then another game that was announced earlier this year at Summer Games Fest was Prince of Persia. And this game just screamed to me, I should be at a Nintendo Direct. And the fact that it wasn't was actually very surprising to me. So I feel as though it would get a secondary trailer at a Direct because this feels as though this is really where the audience is going to be. Though the game got dislike bombed on YouTube due to the visual aesthetic and partially due to the trailer's oddly chosen music, I feel as though it gets a second look during a Nintendo Direct and then Ubisoft also pivots later on to a Mario Rabbids DLC where they show us some gameplay in the direction of the upcoming expansion pack. But Prince of Persia, I feel as though has to be here because this is where the audience is going to be. Have we seen any Switch native gameplay footage yet of this game? I haven't, I mean, I've seen, I saw the initial uh, reveal at Summer Games Fest. Was it Summer Games Fest, I believe, is when they showed it? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I know that the Ubisoft forward had more stuff but did have we ever have we seen any switch gameplay because i think if we haven't then i could definitely see prince of persia at at this direct because it's 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 almost the perfect game for a direct especially you know riding on metroid dread the success of that a lot of people want to play these style of games and and look prince of persia I mean, there is a lot there that that reminds me of Metroid Dread, right? And I think, I think it's it, it makes a ton of sense for it to be here, even though we've, we know about the game, we know that it exists, and we know that it, it has um, a date of, of early next year. I think it's going to be at this direct. Yeah, we saw some of the praise come out from individuals who had played the Switch version, saying it was sixty frames a second. So it definitely feels as though it's an easy opportunity for Ubisoft to gain a win with the game and just, again, put that interest into the Switch base who is going to watch a Nintendo Direct over Summer Games Fest or even Ubisoft's own show. Show the game, get that percentage of people interested and do yourself a favor. And it just feels as though it's a perfect fit for a Direct. Yep. Another game that, if it's Switch-bound, has the potential of being at this Direct is the upcoming Crash Team Rumble. Now, the support page for this game lists the Switch as a platform of release, but officially the game has not been announced for the Switch. Do you think it gets announced for Switch at this Direct? Yes, I do. I mean, the fact that there's a support page with the Switch info, but it hasn't actually been officially announced for the Switch, again, it's it reminds me of... The same thing with the Metal Gear Collection. It, it has to be at this direct, I feel like. So yeah, I, I think we'll see it. And it's a good it's a good get for the Switch, uh, having Crash Team Rumble on the Switch. Because I think it would be quite popular with uh, fans of Crash. I know there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, see, I have minimal interest in this game and... You know, I, I could see where if you're Activision Blizzard, where you'd want to put this on the Switch because it's more of that casual, family-friendly, fun type of game. Um, but easily that support page could just be, you know, in turn making a mistake. But if the game is Switch-bound, this seems as though this would be the venue for them to finally announce it. And if it's not there, I would probably give up hope that the game is coming to the Switch, at least in the foreseeable future. Now, I want to go to Square Enix because they always feel as though they have a presence at almost anyone's showcase. And earlier this month, they had announced a a variety of games for some platforms, 
specifically the Switch, they had announced a Dragon Quest Monsters game. Gave mm-hmm. no additional details, just kind of threw it out there. This Direct, I believe, we will get the full title and we will get a nice trailer, some a look at the gameplay of what this next Dragon Quest Monsters game is going to be all about. Well, I'm going to take your word for it on that one. I am not a Dragon Quest fan at all. I don't really keep up to date with that series. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to agree with you on that. <laughs> and sticking to Square Enix, they also had accidentally leaked their own game, which is Star Ocean 2 Remake. Oh, yeah. And I've spoken of this a little bit on a couple of forum sites where right now the game is scheduled to come out later this holiday. And it's actually going to be more ambitious than what we got from the star ocean one remake this sounds like it's going to be a very interesting release like it's not a grand remake final fantasy 7 remake style or even trials of mana tier it's just more ambitious than what star ocean one was and with it coming out later this year this feels as though it's going to be the venue that the game could potentially be officially announced i feel as though waiting till september may be a little too close to its release date following just a couple of months later. And, you know, I know Star Ocean, not exactly something that you think about when maybe you think of Nintendo, but it does have a history on Nintendo platforms. Mm. Yeah, Star Ocean. Star Ocean is uh, is a good one. Star Ocean 2, I should say, is a good prediction to make. And, yeah, I mean, they kind of leaked it themselves. So, yeah, let's, I mean... Again, it, Star Ocean, I mean, it started its life on the SNES, so I, I think it makes sense to to have it here on the on the Direct. Now, there is another Square Enix game that hit the rumor cycle a little bit this week, and it's Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Uh, Chrono Trigger, I don't think... I don't think it's going to be at this direct because i don't think it's actually real and i say that because i know the game historically has had issues with licensing and there's i don't know the the specifics of it nate but i believe there's multiple parties that kind of own a piece of of chrono trigger um whatever that's worth and unless everyone's kind of come to an agreement that you know, rebooting the game or remaking the game in HD 2D is is the right move. It's hard for me to imagine that this is actually a thing. So I'm going to respectfully say that this game uh, doesn't exist and we won't see it at this direct. But I'm interested in your thoughts on this one. What do you got? The fact that there's already a Steam version that they released that they had patched over the years would suggest to me that any, you know, legal trouble they've likely have sorted out with the ownership and the parties involved. But to remake the game, a game that is considered one of the best games ever made, you run that inherent risk of are you going to do it proper justice? Yeah. And the the yeah. fact that we've seen like the HD 2D technologies, we've seen remakes just get especially 2D sprite remakes, you can do them well without having to change anything. If I'm square, if I want to do anything with Chrono Trigger, I'm going to do something more basic. I'm not going to remake the game. And I just have a hard time believing that Square has interest of remaking Chrono Trigger at this stage. So I don't, right now, I don't put any real faith in the rumor. Would I love to replay Chrono Trigger in lush HD 2D graphics, 100%. But at the moment, I just have a hard time believing that is something that they are planning to do. Yeah, it's more of a hopes and dreams than anything, I feel like. And you you, you touched on it with, you know, with your assessment there as well. Anything less than the HD 2D, um, I mean, you kind of run the risk of why don't you just put it on the NSO service at that point? Because it's just pretty much the same game right so I, I i don't think so i don't think so do i want um 
do I want, you know, a, a remake of Chrono Trigger? Yes, absolutely. But you're right. Like if they're going to remake Chrono Trigger, then they have to be very, very careful with with what they do. And I think they know that, you know, I think they know that this is a a beloved, beloved game, a beloved franchise, really. I mean, I don't care much about Chrono Cross, but I know a lot of people do. But I feel like they have to be very careful about how they approach remaking Chrono Trigger. So I think, honestly, it's one of those games that is just, better left alone and i think any talk of a remake of that game is just kind of hopes and dreams and you know as we're talking about like the idea of remaking remastering old 2d games i'm reminded of a konami game that we haven't heard much about since it was announced last year go on do you know what game i'm referring to uh i do not Suikoden, one and oh, two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened to Suikoden? Maybe we find out this week. <laughs> I hope so. And, I mean, I think that's, you know, that's the same thing with Metal Gear, right? It's like we need to get an update on what's happening with Suikoden. I feel like we do. Yeah, I mean, it has beautiful 2D visuals that were, wow, when they showed it. And we haven't gotten an update. They had said it was supposed to come out this year. We're yeah. now halfway into the year with no update on it so you know maybe it makes an appearance at this direct at the release date i had actually forgotten all about that game until this moment and now that reminds me of another square enix game that we haven't had any update on in quite a while another hd 2d game dragon quest 3 mm. yeah i mean that could also be a a possibility again i'm gonna default to you on that because you're the dragon quest guy i'm not but what do you what do you think what's your I, percentage yeah, I, here i feel like they wait till tokyo game show for it yeah i mean some of these announced well see that's a good good point right some of these announcements could easily get bumped for tokyo game show even star ocean 2 could potentially you know get announced there right so yeah you're probably right but hey bring on uh bring on the uh the konami stuff because i'm i'm excited <laughs> Now, one game I'm going to give a prediction here is from Sega, and it's a new Valkyrie Chronicles game. Yeah, um, not really what I was thinking when I think about Sega, but we've already seen a lot of announcements from Sega over um, the last couple of weeks. So the question is, well, what are we going to see from Sega at the Direct? I mean, they've already kind of shown us Sonic and, and, and the things they're doing. Valkyrie Chronicles is a good prediction. And I'm going to I'm gonna say, yeah, it's happening. It's definitely one of those games I could easily see them hold for, you know, again, a September director of the Tokyo Game Show. It's all about that timing. And it would be dependent on if the game is a thing. When it would, when is it going to release? If it was to release this year, June makes a lot of sense. If it's something for 2024, you can easily wait until later in the year, if not early next year. But I want to put out that out there as a prediction. I love that franchise, and I would love a brand new entry. And you know, putting it and willing it into the universe right now. So, come on, Sega, you made some people happy with Sonic Superstar. Mm, absolutely. Make me happy with Valkyrie Chronicles. It'd be a good one. But where people are going to get happy or hopefully happy, potentially be disappointed and angry, is with Nintendo. The whole reason we watch the directs. All right. Before before we start, just a, a, a we I have to ask this question because people our audience are gonna ask in the in the chat, in the comments. Just a yes or no answer and we can move on. Anything hardware related at this direct? No. Okay, I agree. I agree. Now we can move on. <laughs> yes. Now to the game. <laughs> now, as we said, you know, earlier, there's no game dated beyond Pikmin 4. So that means August, September, October, November, December are currently vacant of a Nintendo release. And earlier this year, we had the 2D Mario, well, we had a Mario movie come out. And we had said in, you know, our early predictions for the year, 
feels as though we're going to get something Mario this year. We this did. is the time. Now is the time to show us the direction of the 2D Mario franchise genre, however you want to classify and define it. Now we're going to see a brand new 2D Mario game be introduced for the Switch. Come out this holiday. That is my prediction. That is my hope. Mm -hmm. That is the big game announcement, I believe, happens at this show. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are talking about this 2D Mario. Uh, there's a lot of smoke around this one. And to be honest, this is probably the the kind of the pinnacle of the show, you know, the, the big announcement of the show, a new 2D Mario game. It makes a lot of sense to me. 2D Mario is is a uh, is a style of game that people love to play. I mean, we saw um, new Super Mario Brothers Deluxe and all that stuff. They, all of these games sell extremely well. It makes a lot of sense. I think it's happening. My question to you, though, Nate, is when does this game come out? Obviously, it's a holiday game, but when do when do you think this game would release? Uh, I mean, I would say ideally it comes out in late October, yeah. first half of November. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I think before Thanksgiving is, is a safe bet to say maybe late October. But this is a game that I feel like Nintendo has had in their back pocket for a little bit. And this is the right time to unveil it and get it out there. And I look... I think this is a pretty exciting announcement. Of course, it's not going to be Mario Odyssey 2 or what people you know want from Mario. There's a lot of people that want a new Odyssey game. I don't think we're getting another Odyssey game this generation. I think that's whatever that whatever that's worth. I think it's coming out next generation. But 2D Mario makes a lot of sense, and it's probably the biggest announcement at the direct. And I think it's happening. Yeah, if. I mean, if we're going to get another Mario game this generation, it's going to be a 2D Mario game. 3D Mario, I think, is better being held off of the next generation hardware at this point. And we haven't had an original 2D Mario this generation. No. I'm not including Mario Maker 2. Right. But, you know, we've had the ports of New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, Luigi U. Mm -hmm. Give us that original one. And, you know, you have to drop the new of the new Super Mario Brothers line. You have to completely abandon that. And I'm not just talking the new in the title. I'm also talking the visual aesthetic, the music direction, right? everything. You have to almost reinvent the 2D Marios. And people might be saying, well, why would you do that? Look at the history of 2D Mario. When you look at every 2D Mario pre-Wii, mm -hmm they reinvented themselves on every system that they were introduced to. You could look at Mario Brothers 1 to Mario Brothers 3 on the NES. Yeah. And the games look completely different, play differently, and they were evolutions on each other. Then you could jump to the Super NES. Yep. Look at Super Mario World and mm -hmm. go to Yoshi's Island. Oh, completely yeah. Completely different. Oh, yeah. That's what made 2D Mario such a unique and fun thing that got people excited. It's time to re- invigorate that you know that series and you have to do it by a new visual direction maybe they'll break out the silicon graphics workstations and do it realistic like donkey kong country what do you think it'd be cool i'm about to kick you off the show <laughs> <laughs> now nah, bring on 2d mario i'm excited <laughs> Let, let's let's see it i i i honestly i'm i'm very very excited to play another mario game 2d one Yeah, I mean, I didn't even play New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe on the Switch because I had already played it on yeah, the Wii U. Same. I already played and, it and I loved it, but there's yeah, no I mean, reason to, to play it again. Right. And I mean, that's the main thing is if you can reinvigorate, if you can make me excited with a new visual style and that music that just resonates with me, and, you know, I'm going to be there day one for a new 2D Mario game. You just have to make those minor changes. And with the movie there, there's still a lot of hype with the Mario franchise. They, move, they moved a lot of Switch systems around the movie. Mario games are selling strong. Now is the time to strike. I'm almost surprised they wouldn't have announced this game just a few months back in February before the movie came out for maximum impact. But, you know, June 
is a fine time to do it as well. Release it in time for holiday, and you are going to sell a lot of hardware. Never mind in tandem with Tears of the Kingdom and, you know, Pokemon DLC, which exist, you know, this potential exists that we see the Pokemon DLC be shown in this direct. There is precedent for it. They did this with Sword and Shield back in the day. So it's just a good time for a 2D Mario game, and old people like us will get interested in it. And I know there's definitely some lapped 2D Mario fans who have likely been waiting for that new 2D Mario game to come to something like the Switch, and they might buy hardware just to play the game. It is a hardware mover. It was always a hardware mover back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, I think, I don't want to say it's a lock, but it's as close to a lock as I think it could be for this showcase. Yeah, I mean, the other big game I think has a very realistic chance of being in this direct is Metroid Prime 4. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> we got to talk about this. Okay. So Metroid Prime 4. We uh what what was what was the thing that was tweeted last week? It was it was uh the anniversary of the announcement. Like how long ago was it? Like 7 years ago or something. Um, yeah, I think yeah, 6 or 7 years ago this month they announced Metroid Prime 4 for the Switch. This is this is a tough one to say it's absolutely happening because there's nothing left, right? Because based on what we think is happening with Metroid Prime 4, it feels like it may be an early 2024 release, right? Or, a, you know, before the end of fiscal, uh, which, you know, which means it could kind of sneak in February next year or even March next year, right? Based on that, wouldn't it make more sense to announce it in September when there is, you know, the, the kind of the typical Nintendo marketing window versus a basically a eight month wait for Metroid Prime Four? Mm -hmm. But with that said, with that said, I feel like Nintendo, and I, I, I want to be very careful the way I say this because Nintendo does whatever Nintendo wants, but I feel like Nintendo owes their fans and their their customer base an update on what's happening with Metroid Prime 4. So maybe this is just me willing this into the into existence at this direct, but I think we're going to get an update on Metroid Prime 4. Whether that update is meaningful, I don't know, but I I feel like they're going to give fans an update on the development of that game and potentially slap a, a 2024 year on the end of it and you know and say it's coming next year type of thing but other than that a lot of me just feels like maybe it's coming it's going to get announced later this year potentially at a september direct but i uh, i'm interested to hear your take on this as well if Metroid Prime 4 is here, it has to be a meaningful update. They can't get away with just some vagary and say, oh, we're going to give you an update on this game a little later, but here's a promotional image to get you excited in the meantime. No, it's not going to cut it. It's been years now. It's been essentially the duration of the entire generation since we got a meaningful update at Metroid Prime 4. We haven't even seen the game. Mm -hmm. When you show it for the first time, it has to be a trailer of substance, and it has to conclude with a release year. Man, Maybe not an exact date, but it has to come out with, if it's coming out in 2024, it has to at least say 2024 in it. First half 2024. Yeah. Anything less yeah. than that, then this was then it's a wasted opportunity. I mean, you're absolutely right. If, they, if they're going to show this game, it has to impress, because it's been such a long time. I think anything that's, less than than good is going to be disappointing but with that said let me uh let me throw this out there was talk that potentially a metroid prime 2 remaster was in development mm -hmm. and potentially it could already be completed and potentially nintendo may have it in their back pocket as as something that they could bring out what if Metroid Prime 4 isn't at the show 
but Metroid Prime Remaster is announced. I'm not saying it's a shadow drop because that would be, I don't know if they're going to do another shadow drop for Metroid Prime Remaster. I think the first one was an interesting experiment. It did well, um, but it was also pro- probably something that would have sold more if they just kind of did it the normal way. But what if they kind of announced Metroid Prime 2 Remaster as uh, a game for later this year? We'll just we'll just try it and just say September. And in September, they announced Metroid Prime 4 for next year, early next year. Do you think that is something that potentially could happen? Yes. I mean, I view it as kind of a consolation prize. Right. And it would, I feel as though it's almost throwing Metroid Prime 2 into a Metroid Prime Federation 4 situation. It's not the Metroid we want to see. It's not the right. Metroid we want at this moment. We want to see Metroid Prime 4. So you then, giving us two is just kind of that why. Either pair them together or don't right. bother. So then if we don't hear anything about Metroid Prime 4 at the showcase... There's just silence and there's no acknowledgement of it, which, hey, look, let's be honest, probably could happen. There's a very good chance that it could happen. What does that, what does that tell us? Does, does that tell us that, you know, Metroid Prime 4 is, is a 2024 game, uh, first half of 2024 game, and they'll just announce it later? Or do you think that maybe, just maybe, they're calling it, for this generation and they're going to move on to the next generation no i think it would be the former i think it would just be a case of we can announce this in september it's going to come out in that first half of 2024 potentially still make this fiscal year and they'd be in fine position i mean if you're already announcing a 2d mario game for this holiday at this direct Mm -hmm. I don't feel as though the omission of Metroid Prime 4 is really going to detract from the overall, you know, positive nature of the show. If anything, by having it there is only going to heighten how people are going to feel about this showcase where you're going to have so much enthusiasm and energy to the switch where people are going to say, man, this is supposed to be the, you know, the swan song. This is supposed to be the final year of the platform, but we're getting a 2D Mario we're getting Metroid Prime 4 in the next six to eight months. All of a sudden, the conversation around this dying system changes. Yeah. Yeah. It's revitalized. It's given a second wind. Well, don't forget, Nintendo did say that they wanted to sell 15 million Switches this fiscal. Was that was that the number? Yes. So, I mean, that, that has not yet been revised, right? So, assuming that has not been revised and it won't be, I mean, it, it could be, but... At, at the make as of the making of this if this episode it hasn't been that's still a very aggressive number so they need some strong software on the back end uh to to really help them get there so look 2d mario metroid prime 4 i mean they're big big games i mean metroid prime obviously doesn't sell very well but i would also say that metroid prime 4 will be the best-selling metroid game uh to to come out to date so yeah i mean you need those big games to kind of to you know support selling 15 million switch units so i think i think metroid prime 4 is is a thing that's coming out this year i mean i think the fiscal year definitely remains in play for the game and you know whether or not it is shown at this direct i don't think anyone could take any meaningful extrapolation of what that means and and you know yeah. in reference to the state of the game because if it's announced in September, it's only three months away. It means Nintendo easily could have announced it and shown it in June, and they willingly chose not to. Right. But if I'm Nintendo and I want to just have that surge of energy on my brand, I would definitely pair both of them here. Because when you look at the Xbox showcase, they threw a lot of what they have in the pipeline out in it. You had Forza Fable, Hellblade 2, mm-hmm. and that got people excited about the brand. Don't pull a Sony showcase here and go conservative. Yeah. You, you're you in your final year of the Switch. Now is the time to say, yeah, we're going out, but we're going out strong. Right. And here's a lineup of games that are going to get you excited into the middle of 2024. And because we got some big gunners coming. I mean, I've seen people out there saying, oh, Tears of the Kingdom, 
wrapped up the switch mm -hmm. i'm nintendo i'm about to say no 2d mario metroid more yeah we got things coming and we're going to carry over into that next generation with a lot of energy on our side a lot of momentum at our back and we're going to launch our next gen system with you excited about what we can deliver yeah agree bring it on bring on metroid finally been waiting for such a long time <laughs> give us something more other than a png nintendo exactly it has to it has to be meaningful it has to deliver the hype if it's anything less than meaningful it's just going to be a misfire you can't go this long with silence and come out with something lackluster blow our socks off open the show with it honestly yeah. open the show with it and kick things off right that, you know right away that would be hype that'd be hype and it would also be a confidence move by nintendo to really say look we, we're not messing around with metroid prime we know it's been in development for a long time but hey it's been worth the wait and here it is so yeah bring yeah. it on. i mean that's the thing back when metroid prime remaster came out when we gave our thoughts and reactions to that direct i had said the fact that they shadow dropped this release suggests to me that Metroid Prime 4 had crossed a milestone. Yeah. Uh, they have a general idea of when the game is coming out. And at the time, I felt as though it could be 2023 or at least the fiscal year. And I still believe that is the case. Hopefully, we can get, you know, affirmation that is indeed the case at this direct. Now, another game of the four in it, and I'm not talking about golf. I paused for laughter. None came. I need that soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Is Pikmin 4. And, you know, I'm, I'm expecting just a very brief trailer for this game because I think they will have a Pikmin 4 direct in June, um, July. I'm sorry. And then we'll have like media previews and all that type of stuff drop around the time of the Pikmin 4 Direct in a couple of weeks. Yep. So I don't think they're going to spend too much time on the game at this Direct. It feels as though it's kind of kind of wasted when you're going to do something very likely dedicated in just it, a few more weeks. Yeah, it, it, it'll it'll be in the in this Direct. Pikmin 4 is, uh, I think it's a game that, I mean, look, there'll be a deeper dive later on, but I think... We, they're going to just remind people that this game exists. It's coming soon, and you should check it out if uh, if you knew uh, anything about Pikmin or you like Pikmin previously. Go pick it up. I think it's going to be at this direct. I mean, they've done this before with games that that have been announced and are coming out. So yeah, Pikmin Four is is uh, I, I'd almost say that this is probably a lock for for the show. Mm hmm. Now, I have to bring up Fire Emblem, much to Sean's dismay. <laughs> but there is still another Fire Emblem game coming to the Nintendo Switch. We have talked about this a few times now, and it is Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War, a remake of Fire Emblem 4. And, you know, I don't think June is the proper venue to announce this game. I feel as though they will wait till September, and my reasoning behind that is Last September is when they announced Fire Emblem Engaged, came out in early 2023. Mm. And the fact that we're still only about six months from the release of Engaged, despite them rolling out DLC quite quite rapidly for it, I yeah. still think they're, they will hold Genealogy of the Holy War until September and release it in early 2024. I would love to see the game now, but it feels as though it is a better title to announced in just a couple of more months yep agree with you i think it's it's a september thing rather than the june thing so i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with you on that one and that's definitely one of the situations here that makes the predictions very difficult is that a lot of these games could easily be held to september it's all dependent on when they could release which will dictate when they are announced or revealed and given trailers. I mean, so honestly, a lot of these games could be announced on Twitter over the next month, you know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> like this next one was announced on Twitter. It's everybody's one-two switch. And oh, that's about God. all the time I'm committing to that game in Wait. this episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't know anything no. about this game. Not even as, We haven't seen Good. any screenshots. We haven't seen anything. You don't think we're going to get anything at the Direct? I, I think Nintendo is... is going to show us something 
everybody want to switch at this direct? If they spend more than 10 cumulative seconds on this game <laughs> in the direct, I'm holding you personally responsible. I think it's going to open the show. I'm kidding. It's not going to open the show, but it's going to be... It, I think it's going to be in there. Like, it's a Nintendo first-party game. They... they it just, they're gonna did you see the images they put out for this game i did but did you see the name of the main character they they, they can't his name is mc horace and they, he's a horse they can't just sell this game and not show it to anyone they can no they, they can't they have to it has to be in in this direct like they're gonna show like oh no. they're gonna show 30 seconds of the game and that's it and it will be never be discussed again until it if comes they out. show 30 seconds of this game, it better be just meme worthy disaster footage. Like, I don't even want to see them milking a cow this time. I want to see something so far fetched, so messed up that it makes the whole gaming industry pause for a minute and say, What did I just see? <laughs> like, I hope it takes the tone of the direct down from an A plus to wow. a C. Wow. I mean, it'd be very hard to. to- to make it a C. If, if Metroid Prime 4 and, and 2D Mario's in there, I don't know if we can get down to a C at that His point. His name is M.C. Horace. He's Look, a horse. I, I I didn't make this game. He's Nintendo a did. horse. And at, at, at a Nintendo Direct, they uh, they have the platform to, uh, to talk about this game a little more. It should remain forgotten. You remember what you said about Redfall? Oh God! I, this is I Nintendo's know. Redfall. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you, Nate, <laughs> but I don't know. I just feel like this is a direct announcement, whatever that's worth. I don't want to see this game. Well, you may want to. You may want to um, walk away and grab a drink of water, and then come back. For the- I will rate this direct a D <laughs> if I see this game. I don't care if 2D Mario, Metroid Prime 4, Fire Emblem 4 remake. I want to see Metroid Prime 5, Grand, Th- Grand Theft Auto 6, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth are all Switch exclusive. I, I want to give it a D. I want to see gameplay of everybody want to Switch. You know what? I will buy you a copy <laughs> and you can play it with your family. <laughs> I will refund that copy. <laughs> <laughs> MC Horace, <laughs> my God! Uh, where are we going from here? <laughs> and I, you took all the energy out of this discussion. Well, there, there, there's a few more things we have here. I don't even want to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me tell you one thing. F Zero GX. This is a game that has been rumored for a while. I believe there's some discussion that this game is already completed and it's one of these games that is sitting in Nintendo's back pocket, ready to be unveiled. What do you think about F-Zero GX? A, do you think that it still exists or it exists? And B, will it be at this Nintendo Direct? I am going to say it will be because this is a cool announcement. But what do you think about F Zero GX, Nate? I mean, there is an F Zero project. We've you know discussed this since last year. There is an F Zero project for Switch, mm-hmm. and you know June I mean, be a nice time for it's. Just, this is one of those games that I go back and forth between June and September with, because it right. all comes down to that release timing. They could announce it, you know, in September and release it early next year, or you announce it now in June and release it this year. And, you know, the F Zero fan in me says, announce it now. Give me F Zero. I want to play F Zero. And it's just one of those games I go back and forth with, especially when we look at this lineup of games. If you have 2D Mario, Metroid Prime 4, how much hype are you packing into this? Are we really going to get the Holy Trinity? Hmm. Well, I mean, we we have said that, you know, this is Nintendo's last year of the Switch, at least unofficially. So maybe this is, you know, that they go big, right? But yeah, I mean, this potentially could be something they could hold out for a later Direct, potentially in September. Yeah, look, I think F-Zero GX does exist. I'm going to say that it comes to this Direct. I think 
F0 GX for us is the Holy Trinity, but we also have to remember that GX, I mean, what year did that come out? Was it like 2004, 2005, maybe? It's been a, it's been a long time since we've seen an F0 game. I know there's been some on the, on the Game Boy Advance, um, but like, it's been a very, very long time since we've seen anything F0. So even though mm -hmm. it is a big announcement for us, it's probably going to be, I don't want to say lost on a lot of people, but it's not going to be, it's not going to have the, the levels of hype and excitement for, I guess, the majority of people out there. So I don't know. I, I, th I don't feel like this is going to be a big release by Nint from Nintendo. And that's why I think they're going to unveil it at this Direct. Yeah, I mean, when you put it that way, I mean, F-Zero GX barely scraped over a million copies on the GameCube. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that was just such an injustice at the time. This was one of the best arcade racers ever made. That was fantastic. And, I mean, the next time you saw a console-related F-Zero was the F-Zero wind -em up cars in Nintendo Land. Mm -hmm. Such a fall from grace. Yep. But, I mean, if in this direct I hear Big Blue or Mute City music start up, you just hear it. <laughs> I could see it. Going to get copyright struck. Maybe, but, I mean, our singing is way off key. The, the content ID algorithm has no idea what we're, what we're singing right now. Someone's gonna rip it though. <laughs> Probably gonna be. It's just gonna be on Twitter. We're gonna hit. <laughs> Bring on F Zero GX. I w I want it. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to see that game in HD. I don't care if the if you incorporate online. I don't care if it's just two player online with yeah. bots. I don't. I don't care. I just want to play that game again. No, I, I think this game will be fully fleshed out with a modern coat of paint and some good quality of life plus some good multiplayer options i don't think they're going to uh skim on the multiplayer side of this game i think they're going to do it properly now speaking of remakes especially of the gamecube error paper mario thousand year door you've seen the rumor suggesting that this game is being remade mm -hmm. all i can add to it is that i have heard on my own that there is a paper mario being remade i do not have a hundred percent clarity as to which paper mario is being remade so you know i definitely this definitely has my attention because it does match some of the information i have heard I don't think this is a game that would make its presence known in June, however. I think that would be something that is held into September, if not early next year for an announcement. Yeah. Agree. I think Paper Mario Remake is a September announcement. That makes a lot of sense to me. And it would be released early next year. That's what mm -hmm. I got. Now, there is also the rumor circulating at the moment that Super Mario RPG is getting a remake for the Switch. And my hang-up with this particular announcement is that would Nintendo really be able to get Square on board to do it? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, again, it's one of those situations where we talked about earlier where you have to get multiple parties to agree and sign off on on the project could they get square to do it man that is the million dollar question i'm going to i'm going to put super mario rpg in the chrono trigger category and say it's probably not going to happen personally cuz i don't think there has been any agreement made i don't think square has any kind of indication that they they want to do or remake super mario rpg see i'm gonna go against you just because i hope it is real fair enough it's not on nso and it's kind of an odd omission as to why has it not been released it was on the virtual console on the wii it was and yep. it's kind of like why hasn't it been included yet it, it was also on the super nes classic that's true 
So there's really no reason it hasn't been introduced to NSO on Switch. And the only reason I can come up with is because it is, in fact, being remade for, you know, for the hardware. And right now I'm going to say I'm on board with the idea. Okay. I like it. I like your enthusiasm. I'm going to go the other way and say no one really cares about it. So it's not happening. Damn, man. (laughs) You made us talk about everybody's one two switch and then you come Listen, in and say this. I I don't care about everybody one two switch, but I feel like Nintendo is Nintendo and they for whatever reason someone in their marketing department's like, "Hey, wouldn't it be really cool if we can show a little bit of everybody one two switch?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, let's do it." And it's a done deal. I can guarantee you nobody in Nintendo's marketing department has any enthusiasm. I mean, someone about announced game. it on Twitter. And I'm sure they regretted <laughs> that after. Every letter of that tweet was probably pain and agony for them to type. And then they had to attach the JPEG with that horse. <laughs> and they were like, what am I doing with my life? It's <sighs> coming. <laughs> now, one game I do believe will be at this direct it's going to be a brand new mario party it's been a number of years since we had a new mario party for the switch and that's just that perfect little holiday filler game where everyone likes to play it and a new mario party is definitely due so i do expect the mario party game in the direct yeah i agree and you're right this is going to be a big game for the holidays the previous mario party game sold very very well from what i recall and i expect this to do the same and yes i think this is a a thing and i think this is a thing that will be released later this year for the holiday now there's a couple of other things that i would say have the potential of being here and that's zelda dlc pokemon dlc as well as an update on nso out of the three which do you think are most likely? Well, I think there will be Tears of the Kingdom DLC, but I wonder, I'm just not sure if it's too early to announce it. Um, We know we're going to get NSO updates and there's N64 games that are coming. And I don't know. I mean, part of me feels like we will get some announcement of a new NSO game or a new N64 game for the NSO. There is a list to come of games, I believe. There's still unreleased titles that have been announced that are still coming. So I think we'll probably get an NSO update. It's not going to be anything major, but they may just announce the next N64 game in the list, which could be 1080 snowboarding or Excite Bike or I think Pokemon Stadium 2 was the other one. Yeah, I believe so. So I'm going to say NSO. I think, I mean, when we think of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC, it was announced before, I believe the game even came out. <laughs> they had a $20 expansion pass you just kind of bought into and hoped for the best. And then we saw the Champions content at the Game Awards. And, you know, I think... If there is DLC, this feels like a good time. Potentially, at the same time, you know, maybe you hold it a little later to give the sales of the game a quick jolt if they have slowed down at all. Pokemon DLC, I think, will make a presence here. As I kind of mentioned earlier, there is precedent with that where Sword and Shield DLC had made an appearance in a direct. And then the NSO update, I'm definitely kind of torn on because there are a number of games, as you mentioned, that are still awaiting release. So I feel as though that would wait until August or September when we would get the next wave of GBA and N64 games. And it really comes down to how Nintendo wants to play this Direct. Again, if this Direct is something about giving the platform just a surge of energy and positivity and interest, bring everything you can to the show. But knowing how Nintendo likes to only bring, you know, one, two, or maybe three big announcements to a direct and then hold things for a future show, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they play their cards here. Because, you know, you bring a 2D Mario game, 
it's already going to be regarded as a fantastic direct by most Nintendo fans because yeah. that's that's a huge release. Oh yeah. Now you pair that with Metroid Prime Four. You know, now it's just elevated itself to yeah. almost dream levels for some people. F Zero, you know, shows up and this is all of a sudden the direct of dreams. Right. You you continue to add other content onto it and it just gets better and better. So I would say the potential for this direct is great. It's just going to be a question of how does Nintendo really approach this? And it's largely going to come down to the release dates for these games. This is going to be a direct that primarily focuses on the second half of 2023 and that holiday lineup. Not so much first half of 2024, at least in my opinion. That's usually held for September. My only question about Pokemon DLC is you don't think that's something that they would announce at their Pokemon Direct whenever that happens? Right now, it feels as though this would be the best timing for the Pokemon DLC. I mean, they could wait until August if they want to, but I think now would be the right time for it. I believe they did show it in a Direct back in 2020 for Sword and Shield, and that was in June, so... I think we might see it at this point in you know time. I mean, the discussion around Scarlet and Violet has definitely subsided, so you want to give that a little more interest. And you know, it's an easy way to definitely bolster sales and yeah. get some of those digital pre-orders for the expansion and the DLC and everything for the game, and give us you know a look at it. Because if you give us a look at that new content, and all of a sudden that frame rate is smoother, maybe the visuals are a little better. Yep. Get some people who may have held off on buying the game to say, oh, I'm going to go buy the game because I'm going to have interest in buying the game when this content comes out later this year because it looks as though it runs a lot better. Has been, what now, eight months, no patch. Right. Still waiting. Still waiting, Nintendo. It's not coming. Probably not. So you have any final thoughts on the upcoming direct before we pivot over to some Streamlabs questions. Well, I mean, as mentioned, this is probably the hardest direct to predict because there's a, a lot of possibilities, a lot of different permutations that could happen. Uh, look, I think for the most part, we've, we've accurately predicted um, a couple of things that uh, are definitely happening. Overall, I am... Very, very interested to see how this one goes. But I do agree with you that this Direct really is to kind of shape up the rest of this year. Again, Nintendo has aggressively kind of said they'll, they're will they going to try to sell 15 million Switches this year. So they need some big games to, to get, get there, right? And I think a 2D Mario, a Metroid Prime, potentially an F-Zero GX, and a new Mario Party game, that's... That's pretty compelling for me. That's a pretty big spread of of user base that are invested in buying more, uh, more, more hardware and more software. Plus, not to mention the third party. If we get the Metal Gear collection, which I'm hoping we we do, all of a sudden it could be a, a pretty good switch. Not the switch of of dreams, as you kind of said earlier, but a a very solid one. And I think one that Nintendo has to have because at this point in this juncture where we're kind of waiting to see what the, the rest of the year looks like. And I think even though, you know, we have talked about Tears of the Kingdom being the swan, the swan song, I, I agree with you. I think Nintendo still has a few more tricks up their sleeve that they want to show us. So I think this is going to be a a good direct. I don't think it's going to be a direct of dreams, but it's going to be a good solid Nintendo direct for June that will really shape the rest of this year. And uh, look, I'm I'm confident, but I'm also quietly confident on, on this one. Yeah, I'm definitely going into this direct with just the expectation that 2023 is fully fleshed out. Maybe a little hint at the first half of 2024, but definitely not the primary focus. And, you know, you bring a 2D Mario game, you give an update on Metro Prime 4, F-Zero dated for later this year, a nice look at those third-party games. And, you know, the Switch is going to become a 
focal point of conversation amongst YouTubers, outlets, and stuff for the remainder of 2023. And I do believe there's going to be a lot of Nintendo discussion for the remainder of this calendar year. And it's all going to start with the Direct this week. So looking forward to the showcase. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what Nintendo has planned for us because a few weeks ago, no one was expecting anything from Nintendo this month. And all of a sudden... right. They may give us a lot of content and a lot of discussion points moving into the future. But with that, we go to some Streamlabs questions for this week. And our first one comes from South Coast Horizon, who donated $2.26. You know, I keep hearing, we just need one of these live service games to be a hit. But no one is asking the question, what happens if they all fail? I mean, isn't even Fortnite losing its appeal? Well, I mean, Fortnite is probably losing its appeal, but I still think it's making a lot of money and it's still very, very popular, even though compared to a couple of years ago, it's not doing as well. But I mean, that is a great question. If all live service games fail, then wow the industry has a serious problem because the amount of money mm -hmm. that's being lost, uh, which potentially means the amount of jobs that are, are lost mm -hmm. could be catastrophic. So hopefully that does not happen. Yeah. I don't want to go into like a hyperbole mode with mm -hmm. it, but when you looked at the transition of SD to HD, how many double A and single A tier developers shut down due to just the rising of cost, Yep. If the bubble burst on live service games, you would potentially run that risk of seeing similar effect where the industry just really kind of consolidates. You're going to have a lot of development studios shutting down. You have a lot of people, a lot of jobs. And eventually, you know, it would, would recover once they found new heading, but the effects would be catastrophic. Oh, yeah. And our next question comes from Jackie G, donated a dollar and writes, never wild. <laughs> I mean, he's not, Jackie, you're not wrong. <laughs> one day. Maybe one, one day. day. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, here's one for right up MVG's alley. We had a dollar donation from Nexus. Whatever happened to the rumored banjo game that was discussed prior to last year's June Xbox Showcase, is it time to give up hope for Banjo 3 or Banjo Redoey? Well, I don't really have any updates on Banjo, so I didn't really want to say anything because I hadn't heard anything since last year. So I don't know what what what's happening with Banjo is, is my honest answer. Yeah, I mean, I've heard some minor things here and there as... I've previously said the project was green lit early last year, maybe just a few months prior to that. So any Banjo project that is in development is still very early and any announcement could still be a couple of years off, especially given the way Microsoft has approached announcements. The scale and scope of the project has changed a few times, which is very common in game development. Unfortunately, that also does lead to that potential risk of this is something we wanted to do and you know maybe it just doesn't come together i'm not saying the project has been shelled or anything of that sort but these things do take time it's just you know yep. no news doesn't mean bad right. news right so i'd say just you know be patient and <clears throat> we'll see what really happens with that particular project then had a two dollar donation from zub Mur. Making Turf Shooter its own genre is the best thing to come from Square Enix's live service initiative since A Realm Reborn. What are the chances Xbox gets their own Turf Shooter? Ah, uh, hmm. well, I mean, they could have I mean, some really cool Xbox characters in it if they wanted to, but I think the chances of Xbox getting their own are pretty slim at the moment. I, mean, I guess you could partner. You need to probably partner with a third-party company, kind of like we, what we're seeing yeah. 
what Square did with like Sony with the Foam Stars. Right. Um, what would Xbox call theirs? Xbox All Stars and have like Blinks, the Time Sweeper, in there, and you know what? Blinks is the perfect character to lead that type of a Marcus game. Marcus, no Phoenix. one remembers him. No, you leave Marcus out. You put Blinks in. You put Sneakers, the Mouse. You have the uh, Fusion Frenzy people. Yeah, you have the un- unnamed protagonist from Fable. Yeah, you put all the people from Brute Force. You know what? That's what you do with it for Doom Xbox. Doom guy. You, you take. All of the characters from their unused IP from the original Xbox era. Mm-hmm. And you put them as the main characters of the game. I like it. Because who the hell remembers Blinks, Sneakers, Brute Force People, um, franchises I can't remember because they were just one-off things that were terrible. That's what you do with it. Yeah, I'm into Make it. it happen. <laughs> Then had a follow-up from Zoomer of $2. Also, do you think we'll see more publishers jump on the turf shooter genre soon? No one would think first-person shooters would be such a lasting force in 1994. Also, I only listen to podcasts under three hours, so I can actually finish them. Three hours? That's a long podcast. That is a long time. Then had a $100 donation from SketchDog, whom this episode is dedicated to. No question, but thank you for your donation and support. Then had a $5 donation from Average Katari. Opinion on this hot take. Next Switch should target a steady 720p, 60 FPS on battery, 1080p, 60 or 120 FPS docked, except it really achieves it. No more 4K 120 FPS consoles marketing that barely hits 1440p 60 30 FPS in some cases. Performance is greater than marketed resolution. I don't necessarily disagree with that take. I think targeting higher frame rates over resolution is something that I've always preferred. So I don't I don't necessarily uh you know think it's a hot take, but I guess I will counter your question and say Switch 2. Is it going to be a Switch 2? We don't know what what Nintendo has in store for the next generation, whatever the new hardware is. We suspect it might be because it makes sense. But Nintendo, they sometimes like to pivot in different directions. So I'm going to keep an open mind on what the next hardware is. But I like your idea about you know, uh, prioritizing frame rates over resolution. I think that is a good move. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think anyone would really disagree with that. It's just, you know, buzzwords sell. Mm -hmm. And that's, yep. That's what marketing is all about. Then had a $5 donation from Nintendo. My question to you guys is, have you played Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? If yes, how did you like it? And was it worth the long wait? Keep up the good work. Cheers from Switzerland. Well, Nintendo, I have played and finished the game. I spent about 112 hours, I believe, was my playtime. I thought the game was, was, was exceptional. Was it worth the wait? Uh, I think so. I think it was. I will say that there were parts of the game that didn't feel that much different than Breath of the Wild. And there was a few moments when I was playing the game where it it began to lose me a little bit. And I, I kind of realized, hey, it's time to kind of just wrap up the main story and be done with this game. Because I feel like if I just continue to do side missions and stuff, I'm just going to stop playing. But look, overall, I was very, very happy with the game. I think it's it's better than Breath of the Wild. Nintendo were able to pull off the same trick twice in a generation for a sequel, which there's always a risk that's involved there when when you bring out a sequel to a game. Uh, I didn't like Majora's Mask as much as Ocarina of Time, uh, as an example, but I did like Tears of the Kingdom, and I think it was worth the wait, and I think it's it's definitely worth playing. I have not played it yet. You should. Once you beat Final Fantasy sixteen, you should jump on it. Yeah, I'll play it later this summer. I just really want to play Final Fantasy 16. 
Then had a $5 donation from Dan Brooks, who writes, If you guys were in charge of the financial success of Nintendo, what month next year would you release the successor to Switch? March. Not what you would want to have happen, but what you, what would make Nintendo successful in the long run? Assuming they had their games ready to go, because that's the, that's the key thing. I mean, you, you can't release hardware without games, but assuming they had the games ready, I would say March is, is, is the move. I would come out in September. Okay. I mean, they did because that, that way. the OLED, correct? Right. And yeah. if you go back in the history of consoles, that September-October release wasn't all that uncommon. Mm. You, had, you had consoles launched in August sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's true. I mean... Because if you can sell, I mean, the PS2 was October in North America, right? Yes. If yes. you can sell, you know, let's say September or August, and you have sufficient stock, you sell in those months, and then you ramp up to the holidays where you can move 10, you know, 10 million units worldwide. All of a sudden, in your first six months, you potentially could have moved 15 million units in that single fiscal year. And we're only talking, you know, a six-month period there. Yeah, it's very difficult to pull off, and that's why you know you don't typically see it in the modern age anymore. But that would be my target if I were the financial head of Nintendo, which probably why I'm not, <laughs> or am I? Mm. Then had a dollar donation from Connor the Braxian. What will be the next furry game you will play? Um, I'm trying to think of a furry game I've already played in the past and I'm not coming up with anything. So I don't really know how to answer that. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Googling furry games. I don't know if I should, should be doing this. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I guess I would say the last one I played was Star Fox Adventure. He had good fur effects. Yeah, Conker's Bad Fur Day with the the, fur. the ultimate furry game. <laughs> it's right in the title. There you go. I got nothing. <laughs> then had a dollar donation from Liam Warner. Do you think in 10 to 15 years from now, people will look at Joker to Persona the way people see Cloud to Final Fantasy as sort of a mascot, even if he isn't? Persona 5 has to be the most recognizable at this point, and Joker has had so many crossovers already, too. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, Cloud is is the character for people that well, don't like Final Fantasy, but they've heard about it. Yeah, and but, they've, they've tried to make a new mascots for Final Fantasy over the years. They tried to make it lightning, mm -hmm. but, you know, they just didn't catch her in that bottle. Yep. Some dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> then had a $3 donation from KJ Superstar. Hi, Nate. I hope you have a great day, and thank you for all you have done. And I hope MVG is doing well, too. Thank you. Thank you. My question for you guys is, do you think Metaphor has a shot of being a next-gen Switch title? It has a shot. Yeah, can't dismiss the possibility. Yeah, it has a shot. Then had a dollar donation from Cash Reeves. Absolutely love the podcast. Thanks so much, MVG and Nate. Always love the insights y'all give. Why are companies not making arcade sport games anymore? I want Blitz, NBA Jam, NBA, or NFL Street. So do I. Great question. Great question. Not really sure why. I think there's a, probably a lot of it has to do with getting licenses in order and and things like that. And then, you know, I... I don't know the specifics, but I know the NFL Blitz cabinet that came out from Arcade 1UP had some modifications mm -hmm. to its kind of level of violence and stuff like that. Um, the NFL wasn't too thrilled about it. 
I've also heard stories about NBA Jam. Uh, the NBA was very, very concerned about bringing back NBA Jam because, you know, it's it's uh, it's kind of a wacky kind of NBA game. So I, I think a lot of it has to do with just the, the hoops that you have to jump through to get the appropriate licenses in place and to get everyone on board with, you know, bringing these games back or making a game that was, was so cool back in the 90s because a lot of these things don't translate very well in 2023. But I agree with you. I, I would like to see a new NBA Jam or an NFL Blitz, games like that. They were so much fun to play. Midway did some good stuff back in the day. Yeah, player unions definitely play a role in it. But, I mean, NBA Street during the PS2 era were some of the best games nba street 2 especially if that game got hd'd for a modern release i'd be there day one everything about that game was just a joy and our final streamlabs question for this week comes from jeff grubbs hair <laughs> donated five dollars thanks jeff thank you to the hair Remember, he cut it off. He so did. This is like some sort of sentient hair in a bag. Do you think all of the 2024 games from Microsoft at the Xbox Showcase will release next year as advertised? No. I enjoyed the Xbox Showcase, but games with only a year given for a date sometimes slip yes. out of that year. Something will give. I don't really know what it will be, but I mean, history has told us that delays will happen. Um, but I couldn't say which game. And look, whatever it is, I, I don't think it's going to be catastrophic in the same way as it was, you know, with a couple of years ago with, with games that were getting delayed left and right. But look, there's going to be at least one title that gets delayed. Let's, let's be honest. It, it just is the nature of video games. So, yes, I think there will be something delayed. Oops, and we did have one more question. And this was a dollar donation from Cyprus FX. Hi there. One, could Zelda Wind Waker Twilight Princess release in March 24? What's your opinion? What's your opinion? Maybe I'm kind of of the notion at this point that they will not come to the Switch. I feel the same way. I feel like the window has closed on, on those two games. Like if it comes out in 2024, it's just going to be as like some filler release at that point. So, I mean, yeah. maybe. And part two, at MVG. The Korok Forest in Breath of the Wild had a very low FPS, while in Tears of the Kingdom, it's capped at 30. While looking the same, how can this be achieved technically? All the best to you guys. Wow, that is a deep question to ask at the end of the show. Um, I think, I think it's just optimization. You know, I mean, it's it's an it's a two thousand foot response, and I get it, but they probably found out a, a better way to optimize that particular scene and get you know the frame rate where it needs to be. Um, it is interesting to compare the two games and and the trouble areas. Obviously, there's been work done in Tears of the Kingdom to make the frame rate better than Breath of the Wild, but I think ultimately it's just optimization that was done. Was it ever confirmed that it's using the newer engine? So there was talk that there was a different engine for Breath of the Wild, Nate. Um, but honestly, I don't really know if it was confirmed or not. Like, I'd like to see a... Maybe one day we'll see a GDC talk about it or, or, or just, you know, some corroborated information about the engine tech that's being used. Because a lot of things are very, very similar to me. It's similar in a way where it's very hard for me to imagine that Tears of the Kingdom is running on a completely separate engine. But, mm -hmm. but um, you know, there is evidence to suggest that it is running a different engine so i guess i want to see more information on that before i can we can really discuss that further yeah because i mean that definitely play a role in 
some of the performance in the game, but yeah, yep. definitely need confirmation of that. But that is our last stream labs for this episode. We do have a few more that I'm going to hold for our direct reaction episode. But if you'd like to support the channel, we have the stream labs link in the description below. Donate any dollar amount, ask a question. We will answer it at the end of the episode. Donate $100 or more, and we will dedicate the episode to you. And again, this episode is dedicated to Sketch Dog. And with that, I'd like to thank MVG for joining me, as always. Always a pleasure, Nate. And bring on everybody one to switch. No. But let us know your thoughts in the comment section below on what you hope to see at the Nintendo Direct this week. And we will have our reaction and thoughts after the showcase airs or the direct airs. But until next time, continue to embrace the hate.